uh, Ming here. I just wanted to give a little bit of a showcase of what's possible with stable diffusion, uh, diffusion B, things like that. And it, a lot of these other programs, Draw Things, another awesome app for both the iPhone as well as the Mac. Of course, you can run them, these programs on your own computer if you have a fast enough computer with the graphics card that's pretty beefy or run it in Google Colabs. The following here is a little showcase of what I've done. Now you have to understand that I wouldn't be able to give you just prompts straight out for these because there was a lot of Photoshop work done. There was a lot of using other programs, uh, Pixelmator Pro for expanding if you want super resolution, uh, DaVinci Resolve for color correction, Photoshop for combining different elements, uh, Pixelmator Pro for combining different elements, painting. So there was a lot of my own work on these objects. So you don't get these in a prompt, but I will provide in the description below the video some of the prompts that will get you something a little bit more realistic or a little bit more detailed. So whichever program you're using, you will be able to input something like the specific codec film or cinematic grain, that sort of thing. I added a lot of grain afterwards on some of the images, and some of them I had to completely redo certain elements because not all of the stable diffusion and so forth do humans well as far as face and fingers and horse's legs and that sort of thing. So composition is also something that with your artistic eye, you go through and you change, you create aspects, aspect ratios, things like that to meet what you're looking for up here. It's always got to be, there's, there's a thing called happy accidents, which is really great because every artist, digital or otherwise, will come across that in their work. All of a sudden things are just like, I mean, chemists and a lot of areas will come across happy accidents that take you down another path. And it's like, oh, this was far, far better than I had been going on. But there's also the people who are using reference photos and things like that for doing their artwork. Stable Diffusion is a tool, it allows you some reference photos to do your original intent, which is up here, your creative drive what you've got going. So these are some of my creative drives uh, that you'll see here. And I'll start the little showcase. Okay, so of course, horses in a pasture. Uh, I grew up on a dairy farm. I have some ability to recall detail. And the rainbow in the clouds topped it off nicely. If you look in the cornfields, I have a photo my brother-in-law actually took last time we were up there when it snowed. The ground was very similar to this with a fog that was, well, basically it was the, the snow that was melting off of the corn stalks that had been cut and were lying on the ground. It was a steam rising because the sun was rising and it was melting that. And it was just this foggy atmosphere and it was really great. This is a part of a series of guardians that... Uh, are sometimes evil and sometimes not. There was a lot of work I did on, on this particular one, including creating a handbag for her to put her hand into and things like that. This is not something you get in a prompt right off the bat. This is combining a lot of different elements to make this happen. But the tool for stable diffusion, the tool for the AI allowed an immense reduction in the workload. This of course is a beautiful scene a uh, nice foggy atmosphere. You have to look at reality. You have to look at real life and see that not everything's crystal clear. If you're looking at a cloudy day, you're, you've got fewer shadows. You have more contrast. So the best thing to do is look out in nature. Spend your time out in nature. Or look up some other artists who photograph Ansel Adams, if you want contrast and, and that sort of thing. But there are other artists who capture such beauty and do it so well, and, you know, with certain cameras and such. This is a neat one. And again, a lot more work <laughs> on this to composite and bring this uh, into fruition. I call this Married to the Land. It's showcasing and highlighting the actual 
the beauty of the land itself. What a neat place this would be, right? This was one of those autumn scenes, and I've done I, I've done a lot of rainbow work, so rainbow colors and, and vibrancy and this illumination, this pass-through illumination. And again, I'll put some some of the prompts below so you can see, uh, use them to kick off and to start off or to shape your journey. And of course, a lot of face work on this. So I had to use several different programs to get this face work done. And Codeformer has one. If you look on Hugging Face and you look at Codeformer, they can do some. Others is you just do reiterations through collabs that use Stable Diffusion Infinity, which I did in another video, which you just basically erase it and you just keep iterating until you find something that works really well and use several other programs and, and paint it. There are some of these that I had to come in and I had to paint. It's good to have a nice uh, iPad and pen. This I just loved. There was, <laughs> there was a lot of work on this. There was two owls in this. The, the, the background was off. And, and uh, so I redid a lot of this. But you can see the it, it just pulls you in somewhere deeply, pulls me in somewhere deeply. It's just a beautiful thing to look at, I think. And I'm, I'm not saying, oh, great job, I did. It's, I can appreciate just the beauty of bringing together these elements and all of a sudden, you know, just paint, highlights, shadow, tone, you know, all of these things evoke something in us. This is one of those. I had to use DaVinci Resolve. I did a compositing and a lot of different layers because a lot of my work that I do is in digital video, special effects and things like that. I'm able to take those photos and DaVinci works on photos. I mean, it's not just for video. <laughs> and so I can composite and then work putting in different, they call windows basically. And then you start layering different nodes and working basically color correction on just certain masked out areas. And this was uh, called Beggar in the Light. And I'll have these up on a site. I'm putting them up for sale for those who are just interested in having prints. I think some of these are really spectacular. And again, you're going to see the theme of a lot of these uh, pass through lighting with rainbow illumination. But here, you know, we have a beggar on the side, and she's in this area that is sickly and not quite so well. But you can see the this woman in the center who. Just where she walks, the glow refreshes the land, you know, brings greenery. I have a feeling there's going to be a pleasant interaction between these two. This one was another one that just makes you think. I'm going to just not say anything. It's a fog. The future pause is what I call it. Uh, this one, it's hard to capture this scale. This is a large... Uh, image, but it is a rush of rainbow rain coming through. And you can see this alien or this person who is invigorated, refreshed to her core or his core, their core, to the point that they glow with this. I find this really lovely. <laughs> and this is one of my abstracts. And you can see the clouds and you can see beyond that there are stars. It's a night sky. And these are comets, and these are, it's like a time lapse of comets and different uh, celestial bodies. And of course, trees. You're looking up through the trees to see these things. And this is another cavern of light. A lot of work. <laughs> you don't get this just right off the bat. There's a lot of uh, paint work, uh, composite, uh, redoing the faces, color grading, quite a bit that was done. And back to my horses. I have hundreds of photos that I'm working on, and I'm going to be putting those up on a couple of sites that I'll put up in the future. I'll let you all know about it. So if you're looking for prints for some of these, because I think they're print worthy. Look at the sparkles on the grass even here. So anyway, I hope this brought some inspiration to show you what's possible when you take time. And some of these were days I spent on getting them right.
So if you're looking for something really quick and fast to get it in there, well, you'll, you'll get something that looks quick and fast. And generally, artistry takes longer. Uh, there are times where there's happy accidents and it makes it much quicker. You can do that in hours rather than uh, days. Lots more to come. Please leave a thumbs up to show you like this kind of content, and I'll continue to do it. And if you haven't subscribed and you want to keep my channel going here, please subscribe. And thank you.